Hey there guys, I've finished up my GUI and I want to show you guys how you might use this on Linux. So, um, to start with, you need Python and that should be on any Linux system already, particularly Python 3. And as Python 2 is getting phased out in 2020, I would imagine that most systems are going to be already at Python 3, but we'll show you how to deal with that momentarily. The other thing is you need the PyQt uh, libraries. Uh, I think if you already have KDE installed, you'll have those. Uh, if not, you'll need to install those. I tried looking in my package manager to see if there were any um, packages related to PyQt5. There's a bunch for four, but I don't see any for five. Um, I think it's just there as part of some other libraries, not specifically called out. So once you have that stuff, what you're gonna wanna do is come over to my donation tracker um, uh, GitHub page. And the information for that will be in the bottom of this video. And what you're gonna do is come over here to releases. Now on Linux, you're most likely gonna want the tar.gz, the tarball that's uh, gzipped. You could use the zip file if you want. There's nothing Windows specific about it, but uh, tar utilities tend to be universal on all Linux systems. Zip may or may not be. So you'll click on that, download it, extract it somewhere, open it up, and you'll have what I've got going on over here. Um, this is actually my uh, development. Uh, you can see here, this is my development branch for the uh, for the software here. So what you want to do is. Um, you can see which Python you're, you've got targeted when you type Python by doing which Python. See mine here is user bin Python, where if I do which Python 3, I get user bin Python 3. You need to use Python 3, not Python. It, it'll crash out. So we'll do Python 3, GUI.py, and here's the GUI. Uh, as you saw the information pop up here. Um, if you've never run it before, the information won't pop up until you've um, changed the settings. So what you want to do is click on the settings. And you'll see here there's a participant ID, the text folder, currency symbol, and team ID. So participant ID, where do you get that? If you go to your extra life page, You'll have this long URL at the end. It says participant ID equals. You want to copy and paste that over. However you want to do it. Middle mouse click or whatever. Control C, Control V, whatever. Get that number in here. Text folder. Just click here to pick a folder. That's going to create some text files that will be used in OBS. I'll show you how to use that momentarily. Then a yeah, currency symbol if you want to pick something other than a dollar sign. Uh, right now, team ID doesn't do anything. But you would get that uh, from the team URL the same way you did for the participant ID. Once that's all done, you hit save, exit out of the folder. There's one more step you have to do in order to get that data. And what you'll do is you'll hit run over here. And now you'll see over here, it'll say starting thread one, and that'll start going. And that will grab all your data from your extra life page. And now you'll have some text files that you can use in OPS um, to update. It'll also update the information here. And here, if you've actually had some donations, if not, there's some canned um, text that I put in there to deal with uh, when you first start your campaign or if you haven't had any donations yet. And of course, I'll eventually put team info here. So uh, what's the whole purpose of using the GUI versus the command line? I have another video that shows you how to do this completely in the command line. Uh, there's basically two benefits. Number one, you have this GUI as a sanity check. You know, do these, are these the numbers that you have on your website? Do these things make sense? Because if not, if this data isn't right, then the data in OBS is not going to be right. So that's your first uh, benefit. You could just go to the, the place in the settings file where you set all the text files to be, and you can go check them manually. But this is nice. You don't have to open a bunch of text files. But the really big thing, the whole reason I was working on a GUI this whole time was for the tracker bar. So here's your tracker. You see it's green here, that's for chroma key. You'll see how to use that in a minute. And I'm gonna hit test alert just so you can get an idea what it looks like. So you see there, it's the last donation I had, the amount, the little image. As of right now, 
it's a hard keyed image. Eventually I'll add something to the settings where you can change that image. So we've got all this stuff set up now. I'm gonna actually move this to my third um, screen so I have it available um, while I bring OBS over to show you what to do. And now you're about to get some infinite OBS. There we go, which can be make things a little bit harder, but that's okay. So how do you actually use this data? Let's start with the tracker. So we'll do add uh, window capture. And you can name it tracker or whatever the heck you want to name it. And do you want to look here for uh, tracker, wherever the heck it is? Okay. Um, one thing I've noticed, at least on Windows, I'm not sure if this is the, the same thing that's going to happen on um, Linux, but I have noticed that uh, if you start up OBS before starting up the GUI, sometimes it'll grab the other window, the donation tracker window, instead of this window. So you want to always start this up and open up the tracker window first and then start up OBS. So now we've got this, but it's still green. That's no good. So go to filter or right click it, go to filters, click on plus. We'll do chroma key. By default, it's green. You can see there, you'll hit close. All right, so now it's gone. So we'll test the alert. Boom, that's what will show up over your game every time someone donates. All right, and it'll disappear after some amount of time. So everything's good there. What else can you do with this data? Well, let's say you wanted to show people uh, the goal that you have, right? So you can here, go here, do a text. We'll, we'll call this um, goal text. We'll write goal. All right, put that right there. And then make another one text. This will be the actual goal. Things can't have the same name. That's why I did goal text for the first one. We'll do a read from file instead. And over here, we'll do browse. And mine are in Dropbox. Uh, extra live tracker. So these are all the text files that are made once you hit run. Again, pulling your data um, from the extra life uh, website. So if I go to goal, you see 500. Hit OK. So there's my goal of 500. And I can position this right there. Unfortunately, because of the infinity screen thing we've got going on, there we go. That's a little easier to read. And uh, <clears throat> one other neat thing I want to show you. Um, sometimes you'll see either people who are doing charity things like Extra Life or people who are just. Um, keeping track of their um, subscribers and so on on Twitch, they'll have a scrolling, uh, running scroll with all the people's names and or the messages they're writing. So how do you do that? Again, we'll do text. Um, this time we'll call it a horizontal scroll. Doesn't matter which name it, but uh, these pages can get a little busy. You probably want to name it something that makes sense. We'll do read from file again. And this time we'll pick, once things come up, all right, we will pick Last five donor name amount message horizontal. I try to name these things in a way that you can see what's going to be in there. So you can see this here. These are all the, the last three donations. This would be a little more epic if I had five donations rather than three, but it is what it is. So we'll just put this here, drag it to the end. All right, and then we'll do filter. And we'll add scroll, naturally enough. We'll do a horizontal scroll. You can go really fast. Or people can are going to get a headache trying to read it. You can go nice and slowly. You can go backwards if that's your your thing, or maybe your language supports uh, right to left reading. So we do that, and there we go. So now we've got that scrolling across the bottom. And as I pull from the website every 30 seconds, it will um, update this with the latest names, and you'll just see all the names, the amount they donated, and then the message. So my message here was that I, this was a matching donation for Sean's. If it says none, they didn't provide. A, uh, a message. One last thing I want to show you quickly here, which is when you're ready to finish, if you want to have everything nice and clean on your um, console, hit stop first. That will stop the thread that's grabbing stuff from the website. Go ahead and close your tracker window, then close your donation tracker window. Then you can close up OBS. Uh, 
right, I can't do that because I'm recording this right now. <laughs> uh, but you'll see it said stopping now and then everything's good. It stopped, everything's done. So uh, that's, that's everything. Uh, I, I'm kind of relatively new to writing GUIs when you compare it to um, writing uh, command line utilities. So if you have any issues as you run this, anything that comes about, you just want to come over to uh, the donation tracker page. <clears throat> You'll click on issues and just start a new issue. Of course, you have to have a GitHub account, sign into GitHub, um, but you can do that. Make a new issue. Hey, when I do such and such a thing, I don't get the behavior I expect. The more detailed you can be, the better. But if not, we'll tease it out uh, going back and forth and trying to figure out what's going on. Um, here I've made a couple of issues to track features I wanted to add. So there you go. Uh, finally, um, if you find this useful, you can donate to my um, Extra Life campaign. Um, I do it all for my daughter um, who had to go to Johns Hopkins uh, Children's Center. And uh, so that'd be pretty awesome, but it's not required, of course. Uh, and uh, if you want to help, um, you know, you want to help contribute, you can uh, fork the repo. We've already got um, five forks, so you can fork off of there, um, make some changes, do a PR request, and we can try and see how we can get that um, incorporated back in. Uh, I do uh, want, always want master to be uh, stable, perfect, and running. So if you do any changes, I want uh, to commit against the development branch. And then uh, we can merge into development. And then from there, merge into master uh, if necessary. So there you go. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it um, helps make things easier for you as you're doing your Extra Life campaign. Thanks for watching.